Welcome to Jan Aquarium. Today, we're gonna test out our clownfish rearing rack. Will it be a fail or will it be a success? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Stay tuned. So here we are, the moment of truth. All the plumbing is hooked up. The return pump is off right now because I just put this all together. Our water lines going up. Each tank will have individual water. So far, I'm just gonna fill up these two. I'm not ready to fill these two up yet, so I haven't finished them, but everybody's got their own individual shutoffs for the water into the tanks, and everybody's got individual shutoffs for water out, and they all go in to the main drain, and then it comes down and into the sump tank protein skimmer on this end of the sump tank everything goes into this little area here then out of the protein skimmer gets poured in to this area here where I have some k1 fluid bed I'm gonna add some more k1 to it I have lots of it but I uh, just got to see where the balance is everything flows out through the bottom here through the scrubber pad and into the refugium. The refugium just has live sand and live rock, has more biological filtration, comes over through another 30 uh, pores per square inch pad here, which offers more biological filtration and traps any large contaminants coming out. And so far there is two sponge filters on this end and the heater and the return pump. I'm going to add one more sponge filter to this end and while everything is still cycling I'm going to add a sponge filter to each one of these tanks as well. Wish me luck. Time to start filling these two tanks. Pre-mix salt water. These tanks were just resealed, so this is the test to see if the ceiling held up as well. It's a bit tricky. I have the rack down lower because we're doing another rack of tanks on top. So it's a bit tricky to get this filled, but this should be the only time I have to do this portion by buckets. We're gonna start with one tank and we're gonna give it a test. We'll get this tank close to full. I really only need to get this tank pretty much at the, where the uh, drilled out drain is now. So I will eventually put something up to make the drain up higher so the tank holds more water. But for the time being, while the whole system is still cycling, it's fine just the way it is. Looks like tank one up to this level filled, at least is leak free from the reseal. I resealed all these tanks previous to setting them up. They were already drilled and they already have another drill patch in them. But these 18 gallon tanks should work perfect for what we're trying to do here. I have decided at least while we are cycling the system to add a sponge filter to each tank as well as the two sponge filters in the main sump. I have an ample air supply with a manifold right above the system actually hooked to my 
loop system with my Gemco air pump here, which provides me with ample air wherever I need air in my fish room. So it's not a problem. I'm not wasting any more hydro or anything by hooking up more sponge filters and it's just going to ease on the water changes, help with the cycle and keep the whole system healthier. I'll move the one sponge filter over when we get this second tank filled up. All the water I'm adding to this system is already preheated to 80 degrees, the same as what the system is, and the salt is already mixed. Reason being is I don't want to interrupt any cycle that may have already started in the sump by adding water that's too cold or is not already at the proper salinity. Test number two, whether tank number two holds or not. Believe me, with resealing all these tanks and all this plumbing, I have been nervous about this moment since we started it. I'm envisioning water all over the floor, leaks, repairs to be made, hoping it goes smooth, as this has been quite the endeavor. One more bucket of water and we're there. So tank two water test up to the halfway level. So far, so good. No pools of water, nothing running down, no seams, styrofoam's not wet, no drips underneath. Perfect sponge filter's been added. Just waiting for more water to continue topping these up. This takes a lot of water. It's all RO water and then salt mixed. I added some more K1 to the K1 filter bed I've made here. So hopefully that still runs smoothly. When we do do the initial test here in a few minutes, I'm not gonna run the protein skimmer yet, which really does help out the K1 bed by going into it uh, right there. We're just gonna run uh, the system without the skimmer to see how it runs and make sure all our water levels are good. So, I think we have enough water in here to start. I'm only gonna test one tank at a time to make sure everything works. So I have this shut off on and all the rest shut offs are on the off position. Well, let's plug the pump in and see what happens. Plug is pumped in. Wow, water comes out fast, that's good. Cause we need to fill four tanks with this method. I don't see any leaks here yet. I'm looking for drips coming down from the back because it is, at least should be, flowing into here. Oh, I have this shut off off. Turn it on. System's working. Look at that, flying in. Awesome. Looking for leaks. Roscoe's checking it out with us. System's filling up. Beautiful. One thing I'm going to have to continue to look for here to make sure we're not filling faster than we're draining. And we are a little bit, so I'm going to slow it down. There we go, the overflow is catching up. Everything is gonna have to be fine-tuned. So right now, I'm just happy if I don't have any leaks. And so far, so good. System's running good here, flowing through the K1 bed like it should. Flowing into the refugium and over to the return pump. Excellent. Time to fire up the protein skimmer. Protein skimmer is fired up, doing its job. 
at least starting to. It's not dialed in yet, but we will get it. But it is also helping deliver the water onto the K1 bed, which seems to be working great. Water level's a bit low. I gotta get some more water in the system. But what I'm also gonna have to test is at each tank when it drains to make sure we don't overflow the tank and overcapacitate this 55 gallon. So, so far, everything is working as planned. Time to test tank number two. Enough water is added to the system now. Time to test our last tank we're gonna test on this video, tank number two. We're gonna learn from our mistakes on tank number one and open the overflow ahead of time. You'll notice that this overflow is half the handle cut off. Same with this one and same with this one. I had to do that in order to fit these tanks on this Costco rack. Next time I build, do a rack build for this, if I do another one, I will make my own custom size rack to make everything fit proper and I will get tanks that are drilled on the back so I don't have to have the plumbing out the side. So let's get started. Test number two. It's really hard to turn with half a handle, but that's what we had to do. Very hard to turn actually. Valves open. You can already hear water going. You can hear the system through it. Here comes the water. So, so far, we have enough power to run both of these. Now, I didn't think the hole in the top of that 45 was gonna be an issue, but it apparently is. So I will swap out that 45 with another one. But so far, looks like the system's keeping up here. System seems to be keeping up here as well. All is good. So I found a, a drywall plug to fill the hole for tonight. It's still dripping a little bit, but it'll be fine. It's not squirting anywhere. I'll pick up some more three quarter inch elbows tomorrow, finish the rack and finish testing the rest. I'm confident it's gonna go well since the first two tanks went so well. And I'm excited to start the top rack, which is gonna consist of six 10 gallon tanks for our larvae tanks. But a huge success on this section of the rack complete. I'm happy, happy, happy. This has been a big stressful undertaking and it's turning out just the way I want it. So thank you for watching and until next time, happy fish keeping.